It's not much. But we've got a bag of old silver to go through today. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and I've got a $20.35 bag that has SLQs, some seeded, some barbers, things like that. A lot of it's pretty much coal, but my dealer had a little bag of it and he said, do you want it? And I was like, I'll take it. So I figured I'd go ahead and film it and see if we have anything good in it. Not quite sure. I do see a Mylar flip in there. I don't know why that's in there, but we're going to go ahead and go through it. I'll sort it by the nomination and by type first. And then we'll bring it back in and take a look and see what kind of goodies we have. Let me get it open. I'll bring it back in once it's sorted. All right, so I've got them sorted by denomination type as well as design type. And we do have a half dime here, 18510. That was what was inside this little Mylar flip, probably because it is the oldest coin that I can see from the group. And the fact that it's so small, probably didn't want it dinged around. So an 18510 half dime. We've got some seated dimes, some barber dimes. We've got a seated quarter or two. I guess there's two there. We got a few barber quarters and then a bunch of SLQs. And we even scored a pretty cool 1861 seated half dollar. Looks like it's probably been polished or cleaned. So that's a bummer, but still pretty good detail on it. Now that we've done that, we're going to go through them all. We'll kick it off with this 1851. Oh, it does have an O mint mark. I don't see if I can get this uh, shown for you guys. It does have an O mint mark. Let me flip it around a little bit. And you can see it right there. 1851 O. Definitely not in the best of shape, but easily G4. Probably G4 to VG8. I don't know if it'll get a VG8, but it's a $25 coin in that condition. And uh, we paid just a little over melt value for it. So nice little throw in by my dealer. I'll take that all day. Now let me get the seated dimes set up by year and see what kind of goodies we got in there. So we've laid out the seated dimes in date order and it took a little bit of work to find out some of the dates on some of these. We got one pretty good score in here, but I'll kind of cover them. We've got three 1853 with arrows at the date, all from Philadelphia. A couple of 1854s as well, three of them with arrows at the date. We've got an 1858 that has a lot of corrosion, no arrows, no mint mark. 1873 in pretty decent shape, to be honest. I'll take it. It's got some detail still. 1872 Philadelphia. 1873 arrows at date again when it resumed. We've got three 1875 P's. It's odd, but a couple of them have the holes in them. I think right there and right there. So two with holes, one without. Nothing really great there. We did get an 1875 with an S. I know it's hard to see because it's pretty beat up. But it does have an S mint mark on that one. So I'll take it. We got one 1876 from Philadelphia. And believe it or not, we do have another 1876. I know it's almost impossible to see with the naked eye, but it's there. And we even have, on the bottom, a CC mint mark. And that's the one with the right C is the high C. I had submitted on Instagram or showed you guys a picture of an 1876 CC seated dime that had the DDO on it. This one doesn't. And even if it did, it's too hard to tell. It's pretty worn. But it is an 1876. You can barely, barely see it. Man, it's tough to see. But it is. We've got two 1877 Phillies, an 1886 Philly, a pretty nice 1887. We've got an 1888, really, really trashy. We've got a 1890 and a couple of 1891s. Again, nothing here worth much at all. The best find would be this 1876 CC. It does fetch more than melt value, even in this condition. I'll take it. Best of the bunch there. Wasn't expecting a lot. Like he said, he just had some oldies. Knows I like the oldies and goodies. Threw them in a bag. I picked them up. Now that we've covered them, let's see if we have any good barber dimes in this stack. 
I've now laid out all the Barber Dimes. Nothing spectacular here. I already checked them against my album and none of them will upgrade and we don't have anything that's key or semi-key. But we have an 1897, 1898, some 1901s, a 1902, handful of 05s, 07. We did get PD and S mints from 1908, but no O's. A 1909. We also have 1911. We have three or four from Philadelphia, one from Denver. Some 1912s, 13s, 14s, 15s, and 16s. Again, nothing really fantastic in here, but can't get mad at getting Barber Dimes. We'll add them to my Barber Dime roll right here. Fill it back up. Move on next to the quarters. Figured I would do the seated and the Barber quarters together since we've only got five of them. We got an 1859, pretty slick, and an 1876 as far as seated quarters. For the Barbers, an 1898 Philly, a 1909 Philly, and a slick 1909 Denver. Again, nothing that great there. Still fun to pick them up, add in my stack. I'll have them do my roll of Barber quarters and move on to the SLQs next. So for the SLQs, I kind of have my own system here. This is all the dateless Type 2 without a mint mark SLQs. These are the dateless Type 2 SLQs with the mint mark. You can see the mint mark just adjacent to the foot. That's a Denver mint mark on that one, for example. All of these I will call later to see if I can catch any glimpse of a date on, but at first glance, I could not. We also found a handful of 1925Ps, a 26P, handful of 27Ps, a 28P, and a 28D, handful of 29Ps, a couple of 29Ds, and some 1930 Philadelphias. None of these are in fantastic shape, but there's a few that are in pretty decent shape overall. I'm happy with some of these. Stinks for the scratches in the back, but still a pretty nice coin, and I'll add it to my rolls. What I'm most excited about was take a look at this. We found a Type 1 SLQ, no stars under the eagle. We can see the tail of the ponytail is facing up towards B. The hand is in Liberty. So we know it's a Type 1 based on that. We don't have a date, but we can date it very easily because if you look closely, there's an S mint mark. So we know without a doubt, this is a 1917S Type 1 SLQ. A little bit better date, and in this condition, $30 to $40 coin that we picked up for less than five bucks. That's the find of the SLQs, and probably the find of the hunt, other than the 1876 seated dime minted in Carson City, which was a cool find as well. I guess since I have it here, I'll show you. We've got kind of a polished 1861 common date, Seated half dollar, but it's a beauty, and I might even be able to add it in my typeset. We'll have to take a look. I posted a picture of this other pickup on my Instagram, but for those that missed it, here's an 1876 CC, just like the one we found. It even has on the reverse the high C, as you can see on the right. But more importantly, it is a DDO FS 102, and when I zoom in, you can see the doubling on Of America. It's a beauty. Happy to add it to my collection. Very cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this junk silver or constitutional silver purchase and hunt with me. We found a couple of goodies, which is why I love hunting the junk bins. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching. This 1861 seated half dollar with no motto will fill a spot in my typeset. Can't get mad at that. Also, and unfortunately, this 1917 Type 1 S SLQ does not upgrade my Standing Liberty Quarter album. But I'll go ahead and stick it in the back here as the Type 1 Reverse, just so we can keep it preserved a little bit longer. Now we just got a few other half dollars to work on. And of course, we still need to upgrade some of the other ones. But 
typeset is getting closer and closer by the month.